So one of the things I regularly get asked about my fishing is what rigs do I actually use and how do I tie them? So we decided to put a little step-by-step -step guide to actually show you how these rigs are tied. And it's one of my favorite rigs that I've used uh, for a number of different species. I've had some, had some nice fish on them as well. We'll go through it with you and uh, show you how to tie it. So I've caught a number of good fish on this rig. Um, it's best suited for large gravel pits, still waters in particular. It's very good for long casting. Uh, because of the anti-tangle properties, um, it's really good if you're actually trying to get some distance and fish spots that are at range. It's a versatile rig as well. It can be fished in a number of different ways, different feeders and different hook lengths, and also off the feeder if you're fishing in silt or chod. So although it's not suited for every situation, it is a versatile rig and, and suits most of my needs when fishing big gravel pits for specimen fish. The first thing you want to do is get your fluorocarbon hook link. Now obviously that depends on what species you're going for and where you're fishing. As I mentioned, this is good rig for a stillwater roach and tench. With the tench, I'll go with an eight pound fluorocarbon. With the roach, I'll scale right down to, to a four pound or, or maybe even a five pound. So straight onto the fluorocarbon. First thing to do is to tie the hook. Again, that depends on the species you're going for. In this instance, I'm tying a size 12 on just to show how to actually tie this rig. So that's the first thing to go onto the fluorocarbon. You then need to cut the fluorocarbon, leaving yourself quite a long length from the hook. That's important because the next stage is to tie a figure of eight loop. And if you haven't got enough fluorocarbon there to actually hold, you're not gonna get that loop and you're not gonna get the knot. So that's quite important, don't undercut it. Tie a figure of eight loop to the end. Now, again, this being a very versatile rig, you can make that rig as short or as long as you want. I like to go with a, with a short hook link, usually of about three to four inches. But again, that depends on the situation you're fishing. So once you've tied the rig to your desired length, you then want to slide a tail rubber onto the actual fluorocarbon hook link over the figure of eight loop. I do that just with a, with a baiting needle. Make sure you've got one with a clip on it or an inserted barb, because once you put that sleeve on, it's not gonna pop back out. So that's your rig tied now and that's gonna just sit aside. Um, what I would recommend and what I do is tie a number of these so they're ready to go. And that's the, that's the beauty of this rig, they're quick change. You can use a quick change swivel, but I prefer not to, because it adds, adds a few more mil onto the length of your actual hook link. Um, and I find this, this way a lot easier uh, to, to change rigs quickly. You literally just put the loop through the swivel, the hook through, and you're back in business. Um, and when you're fishing for specimen fish and you've got very short feeding spells, you want to get that rig back out quickly, um, especially if it's damaged. So that's, that's absolutely ideal. So the next step is to use a float stop or a gripper stop and slide that onto your main line. Um, always, always dampen your main line before you put it on. If you don't, you're going to slide it up. You're going to get kinks in your main line. So slide a gripper stop or a float stop onto the main line. Follow that with a small swivel and then another gripper stop to sandwich that in between. And that's created the, the helicopter setup with the anti-tangle properties, which allows the rig to just spin around the main line. Following that, you want to slide a, a stiff boom onto the main line. And then you, I, I like to actually tie my feeders on the end. Uh, again, you can use a, a quick change swivel, and I do do that when I'm, there may be a chance I, I need to change feeders quickly, but by using a simple Palomar knot, you can quickly tie one on, and it, and it doesn't take long, and you can change quickly. It's also important to have this boom here, so that your rig's sliding down, it actually acts as a buffer. So you're not gonna get that float stop straight onto the swivel, and that obviously makes it a lot stronger. So this rig is fully adjustable, which is great. You can slide the actual hook link down towards the feeder or up the main line. Um, it's worth trying different positions with the hook link when going for roach, for example, and tench. Sometimes they shy away from the feeder. So it's worth experimenting with that. Um, another reason to slide up the hook link is if you do have pockets of chod, silt, um, you can slide it up and so it's not gonna bury the hook link into that. So it's very versatile in that regard and, and it's a great rig.